Okay, I want to talk about a really powerful new feature that's available in ES6, iterators and generators. Now, if you've used for of loops before now, you have actually been using iterators. An iterator is a built-in object in several data types. So arrays, strings, maps, sets, node lists, these all have built-in iterators, which means there's a little wrapper or a little connected object. If you've got one of these objects right here, an iterator is another object that acts as an interface to this one. So if you've got a bunch of properties in here that you want to expose, you can build an iterator that can step through those properties and return them. So you can say, okay, give me the next one, give me the next one, give me the next one, give me the next one. And the iterator will do this. Now, arrays have a built-in one. Very easy. It's like an indexed list. So it's just a numbered list. One at a time, it gives you the next thing. If you're using a for of loop with a string or an array, you are just saying, okay, give me the next item in the array. Give me the next item in the array. Simple enough. Generators are really just a syntactical sugar. They are a nice wrapper around the iterator just to make it a little bit easier to use these built-in ones. So if there's a whole bunch of built-in ones, we can use the generator, simplify the code that we're writing to use the iterator to get at the properties inside here. But building custom iterators lets us return whatever we want. And with the generator, we can actually play with the order that we're getting things back as well. So how do we use these things? Okay, so if you understand that an iterator is just an object that will give you back contents from some other object in some predetermined order, you've got iterators. Generators, there are functions. So if you put a little asterisk like this, after the word function, you are building a generator. And that means that inside this function, you don't have to do anything different. I can just write a normal function, and that's fine. But if I use the word yield, what I'm saying is I'm going to give you back something. I'm yielding up a value to you from some object. We can do something like this. Yield A. Okay. So if I uncomment this line, this will look familiar if you've written any JavaScript. I'm calling a function, and the result of this function is being put into this variable. Okay, this function, because of this asterisk, what it does is it just it gets ready. This will put into here an iterator that's waiting to give you something. Iterators have one built-in method called next. This next method is what's going to actually call and give you this. So I'm going to comment this back out again, and we'll just let's just log out what iter is. Okay, let's run this. There we are. So line 16, object generator. That's what this is. This is my generator. Because I put this asterisk after this, this is my generator. So my generator now has a method called next. If I uncomment this, save it, and run it again, this is what you get back from a yield. So the first time you run this function, it's just sort of, okay, I'm ready to go. I've got your generator. I've got your iterator. I'm all ready. You tell me when you want a value, and I will yield up a value. If I call this again, now functions, if you'll remember, by default in JavaScript, always do this. Return undefined. Not undefined, but undefined. There we go. This is what a function will do. It will always return undefined, even if you don't put this in there. That's what a function does. So if I run this again, there's the value. And then the next time, so I've got two next statements here. I'm calling this twice. Calling the next method once, it gives me back the A. I call it again, and it's done. So the value is undefined. There was nothing that was yielded. It's not because this was undefined. I mean, I can do that. There's this value coming back. But this is the key right here. When I use return 
instead of yield, this other property that's created by the iterator switches from false to true. If I come in here and I add a few more of these, so let's put in A, B, C, and D. I'm going to call next four times. There we are, A, B, C, D. So it was returning these one at a time for me. Dun, 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 false for all of them. So it's, it's never done. But the next time I call, next, this fifth time, so this final time right here, this is going to be looking for a yield. It's not getting one, it's getting a return. When it gets the return, done becomes true. And then if you have actually returned a value here, you will get that. So if I even if I leave that out, the function is still finished all of its yields. It's going to get to the end and it's going to return undefined to me. There we are, undefined. This is the return statement that caused this to happen. If I put a return up in the middle, from that point on, everything is undefined because the return, it stops. These two lines don't ever get to run. We get the A, we get the B for the first two nexts, and then this one, this one, this one, these last three nexts, they're all hitting the return statement. And as soon as we hit the return statement, we're getting true. All right, so that's a basic generator function. Now, I've just done some basic string characters here, but I could, if I wanted, be actually returning something from some other object. So let's do this. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Those are the index numbers. Um, yeah, let's put a 5. Actually, we'll make this one a 5. Make this one a 1. There we go. So I've just randomly selected some of the elements from this array. When I call this again, it's going to run next five times. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Here, we'll put, uh, we'll put a sixth one in there. So we're going to get character 0, then character 5, then character 3, then character 3 again, then character 1, and then the undefined with the done true. So let's try that out. So Finn, Leah, Kylo, Kylo, Poe. Those are our five. Oh, but I didn't save the change with the last one there. So save that, run this again, and there's our done true at the end with the return. So we got those five coming back in the order that we specified. Now you can imagine, you can put this uh, inside of a loop. You could uh, add the incrementing in between there every time. So we could say let i equal 0, and then these could all be i's. So i plus plus yield characters i again. You know, so this is what a loop would be doing. And now I've got three, six, eight. So more than the characters that are inside of here. So let's see what we get. Nope. Yep. Okay. So we get Finn, Poe, Ray, Kylo, Luke, Leah. So in the order, Finn, Poe, Ray, Kylo, Luke, Leah. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then these are not working. These are not working yet because we're only calling next six times. There we are. So I'll clear this again, run it. Oop. There we go. And for the last two, these were invalid, so they're undefined, but done is still false. One more time. 
Now we're going to get the done is true because we're actually reaching the point where we've returned. Okay, so that's a basic iterator. I'm going to comment this out and then we'll talk about custom iterators. Let's shrink this down. Okay, now I have another object. You'll notice object was not listed here as one of the potential things that have a built-in iterator. If you do a for of loop on an object, it's going to fail because objects don't have iterators. Let's let's try to do that right now. Um, for actually, we have to do this after our object, so this will work. So we'll say for let p of Star Wars eight like that. I'm not even going to put any code inside there. There we are. So this fails. I get an error. Star Wars 8 is not iterable. And that is because, by default, objects do not have iterators. If you want to use an iterator to step through an object, you have to build it. All right, so let's get rid of this thing that's causing the error. Four of loops don't work. I'll put this down at the very bottom so it's still in the file when you guys get it. And I'm not going to make you wait for me to type all this. I'll just explain what it's doing. So I have a count variable. Same as I had up here with this, the I, 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 incrementing that. I've got another counter variable called count. I'm going to start at negative one and then I'm going to step through. And what I want to do is I'm going to write out some of these properties. So we create an object, call it whatever you want. Call it my generator. I called it SW8 for Star Wars 8. It is simply an object. Inside of the object, there is one property. This property is a symbol.iterator. So this is a unique value that will never be duplicated. So with this unique value, now I can create a function. This is the iterator function. It returns one object right here. So let's close this down. So there's an object that gets returned from here when you call this function right here. So it's kind of like what we did up here. We said let iter equal Jenny. We called the function. We got back the generator with the iterator. That's what we're doing. So we're going to do the same thing right here. We're going to, <coughs> pardon me, we're going to create that initial generator. I want to say, let, uh, we're just going to call it data equal uh, SW8. This is the object we created, and the property inside of it is symbol.iterator. Okay, great. And then we call it. So by doing this, we're calling this function, which is going to return this object, which is the iterator. And if we look up here, remember, iterators have that one single method Next, this is the method that you call to get at the data. So we are going to log out the result of that, just like we did up here. So data.next. I'm going to call the function next, which is inside of this object. So let's take a look and see what that does. All right, so next is a function. What does it do? It increments that count variable, which started at negative one. So first time you run it, this is going to change to a zero. And then I've got a switch case statement. And I'm just looking at these to say, okay, if it's zero, one, two, three, or something else. If it's zero, I'm going to return this object. This looks a lot like the ones that we're getting from before. We've got a value and we've got a done. We've got value, done, value, done, value, done, value, done. And we're setting it, if it's three, we're going to send back undefined, but we're setting done is true. If it's anything other than three, done is true. Value is undefined. For these three, zero, one, and two, if that's the value of count, well, I decided this is the order that I want to do it. I'm going to send back title, then year, then director. Those are the three. It's title, year, director, 
Not the order that they are in here. That's just the order that I decided to send them back. This is one of the reasons that objects don't have iterators. Uh, iterators. Because who knows what order they're supposed to come back in. It's just a bunch of properties and who knows what the data types are of these things. One of these could be an array and it could be selecting an individual piece. So instead of title, it would be uh, Star Wars 8 dot characters number seven. So we could target something inside of an array that's inside of an object. And my iterator could be doing that customly. Customly? Yeah, doesn't sound right. <laughs> All right. So we'll run this. We called the function, got the iterator, and then we called next. The first time we call next, count was zero. So we got title. So the value is the title. Done is false. Great, that worked. Let's call it four, uh, let's call it five times. So zero, one, two, three, four. Those are going to be the values for our count variable here. Zero, one, two, three, four. So we should get the the items in that order. And there it is. Title, year, director, undefined, undefined, but done is true for both of those last ones. So that's a simple example of a custom iterator which is walking through an object that I've created. Um, if you want, you could make something that was a little bit more generic. Uh, right here, when you're calling the function the first time, if you wanted to pass in something, you could do this. You could say, okay, I'm going to pass in the object that I want to iterate through. Maybe it's a bunch of objects and the property names are the same, or they're similar. So when we call symbol iterator, call that function right here, symbol iterator. Now there's my variable obj. So I'm passing Star Wars 8 into that, and then I can replace this. So now it's a lot more flexible. As long as the properties are the same, or I write logic to look at the object and determine which properties to send back. There we are. Still works. I've just made it a little bit more flexible, a little bit more reusable by not tying it directly to something. And we can also do this asynchronously. If you want to go off and fetch uh, some data set or a series of data sets, you could have your iterator next function, which is um, the iterator function right here. This could be going off and fetching the data. And then the next is going to be walking through all that data once it's back. Uh, but that's a topic for another time. That's, a, that's another long uh, video, another long discussion. So I hope this helps you understand what iterators and generators are, how you can use them, how the built-in generators, how the built-in iterators can help you step through things. And just remember, this is what for of is using under the hood. It's using this iterator next, 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 next method. All right. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. If you found this helpful, please share it with other people. And as always, thanks for watching.